Hey everybody, you guys uh, joined up pretty quick today, so I think we'll get uh, started here shortly. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Mission Control here on a snowy Colorado day. Uh, it's never spring in Colorado, just uh, second or third winter. So, uh, anyways, today uh, we'll still be playing our standard drinking game of you guys take a drink every time I forget to switch screens. Uh, for Friday, uh, you guys didn't get to drink any because I managed to not skip one switch. So, uh, we'll see... Uh, uh, how well I do today, uh, you know, we can make it so everyone would definitely uh, be drunk and have you guys drink every time I say, uh, but I'm not sure you guys have enough alcohol for that. So, uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. I see that Sam's here and Tam, we got uh, Tam, Tim, uh, hey David, and uh, uh, as you guys may have seen in the Facebook group, uh, I'm now recording these, and we will put them up on the new uh, Avalites dot or Avalites uh, USA Facebook page. Now, since I didn't like the quality that Facebook was giving or the organization, so we're going to start putting them up there uh, and see how this goes. So, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Q lists. Uh, Q-list is a way of programming a much more structured show so that you can achieve the same results every night. Uh, there are two types of Q-list, the manual recorded Q-list where the user sets up each state and then saves it, and quick build where the user automatically stacks pre-existing queues or pots to create a Q-list. Uh, to start building a Q-list, press record, and then make sure that record Q-list is selected, or like we did with Chases, we can just hit record three times and take it straight to uh, recording a Q-list, and we'll show that here in a minute. As with Chases, the first press does not record a queue, uh, simply assigns a handle, uh, create a look in the programmer, and once you are happy, select append queue, uh, which will update that queue and go to the next to be ready for you to do. As with the Chase, once you have finished, uh, uh, press clear and then exit. Let's check our next slide. Uh, there are a number of options to choose from when in the record mode uh, for a queue list. Uh, the record mode itself can be changed between queues if you wish. Uh, channel fix your stage, behave as the same as they do when recording other items. Quick build allows you to record a queue list from existing queues. Uh, we'll show that queue number. Uh, it can be changed to, to a point queue, i.e. 2.5 when you wish to insert a queue or change to, to an existing queue number if you wish to update. In these cases, the append option will change to show insert or update to one of the other action you're about to do. A uh, legend, you can set a legend to describe the queue. A pen queue pressing this button will record, will record the current state as shown on uh, the queue number shown on soft key B. Uh, shapes and effects, uh, you can then uh, you can put shapes and effects, uh, shapes and pixel maps into your queues, into your queue list. Uh, advanced options, read number queues, just puts the all point queues uh, to whole number. Uh, you know, do that before you uh, give the queue list to your uh, uh, stage manager so they're not confused why you got all these weird, uh, <laughs> welcome Gordon, uh, all these weird, uh, uh, Q numbers in there, weird point Qs. Uh, a, set Q number. Uh, this is, allows you to renumber a single Qs. Uh, auto load live playbacks. This is turned on. The new playbacks are active during the record process. We'll get auto load link recorded into the Q. This is not the same as recorded by stage. This does not record hard DMX values in the Q. Only links the playbacks into the Q list step. I will show that. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later also. Uh, set times here. You can specify global times for the Q, including fade, delay, and fixture overlap. Once you edit these, the times will apply to all consecutive Qs until you change their values again. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and switch on over to our mobile display, and uh, we'll start a queue list down over here. As you see, I've got the uh, Titan Go interface up. I'm using version 13 here, uh, but there's not going to be any difference between this 
uh, in Qlist recording from version 11.4 to uh, 13. Nothing that's going to be significant uh, in the difference here. So uh, if we hit record uh, three times here, we can see that on our, we have our, our it automatically went to uh, create Qlist rather than uh, just create memory or create chase. So a quick way to do it instead of having to hit the record button, then move over to your soft keys and hit the uh, create cue list. Then we can see uh, we can change our record mode between channel fixture stage and quick build. Uh, we're going to change it right now to quick build. Uh, and then we can then, uh, we could, uh, well, since we're in the record menu here, we can go to create master. But let's go ahead and select one of our empty faders down here. And now we can see uh, we can also still we could rechange our record mode again if we wanted to. We're going to leave it on quick build. Q number, and that's the Q we're about to record. In this case, Q1 because we haven't actually recorded anything yet. Q legend, uh, like we saw, we could change the legend of the Q to something more descriptive than Q1, 2, 3, 4. You know, you could change it to uh, red, green, blue. You know, something more descriptive to help you out uh, with your uh, organization of your show. Uh, append to Q. Uh, we would, would use that to record the Q or hit the blue button down here. Uh, it's going to be the same difference. Uh, shapes and effects. We can go to add uh, shapes and effects. If we hit our next button. Uh, we can see that we can get to our advanced options. We can set time. I uh, set our, change our tracking, and we also just like anything else we've seen in Titan up to this point, uh, we can uh, set a mask. So uh, we're gonna, since we're on quick build, we're going to take these cues I already have existing here, and I'm going to put them into this cue as quickly by just hitting their blue buttons. And we'll see that as I did that, our queue numbers went up each time and now we're on Q7. Since we're happy with that, we're going to hit exit and clear. Now, if I uh, bring this queue list fader up, we can see that nothing happens yet, right? It's because uh, I have to tell it that by default, it's going to wait for go. So then I'm gonna hit that big red go button down here at the bottom. And you see there's the first queue I had and the second and the third and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth. I can see those cues uh, in my cue list. And then it loops back around to Q1. So if I hit exit, or uh, go ahead and uh, bring this down, and I'm gonna hit uh, release, and then release our cue list, and I'll explain why uh, a little bit later. And let me see if we've got uh, any quick questions here. Oh, Gordon's going to have fun with me today, apparently. So uh, we'll move on from with that for a minute. Uh, we can see that, uh, you know, I can just show you to see each of these cues. Oops. And what they had in them. And we can see that we saw those in our... Uh, Q list. Now, one thing you'll notice if we fire back this Q list and we hit go, we see if our first couple of cues have our had our park ends in them, but the rest of them didn't. Uh, that's because of tracking. Now, usually when you're doing uh, the uh, quick build, it is often considered best to turn uh, your tracking option to Q only. Uh, that way, those park hands wouldn't have tracked through, and we would have seen only our. Uh, uh, movers, and I'll explain tracking a little bit later in the uh, lesson here. So go ahead and turn this off again, and we're just going to release it. And let's go, let's record a uh, cue list without uh, having done, uh, without doing quick build. So we're going to hit record three times again, and then select an empty fader. And we'll make sure we're going to go with our uh, record mode as fixture just to make life a little easy here. And we'll leave all of our other options as is. So we'll go and select our BMFLs and we'll throw a locate on them and we'll give them a color, a position. And we're going to move this up over to here for now. And we'll do, actually, we'll do it this way. Group some palettes now. Exit, open more space window capture and we're going to delete that one we started to make because I messed up there and close capture for a moment actually no hit clear 
selector fixtures. There we go. Now we'll be able to see it at the same time here. So now we'll go ahead and uh, locate our fixtures, give them a color and a position and a gobo. And then we'll go into our record mode again. And so now we've got uh, color position uh, fixtures, everything set there. So if we're happy with that look for our first uh, uh, look. We go and hit append Q, or we can hit the blue button down here. It's going to be the same thing. So there we can see that we've now recorded Q1, and our Q number here has moved up to Q2, uh, ready for us to change, uh, record the next. So we'll give it a uh, different color, a different position, a different color, and a different gobo, and we'll make it stark. And we can do the same thing here. And then we can change it again. I'll drive Sam crazy by using this incredibly ugly green just to make him nutty. And we'll make our, we'll see, let's make our zoom large here and then do our zoom too small make them yellow and point them there and append the queue. We'll go with that, uh, those five cues being enough. So we'll hit exit and clear. Now we raise our fader. We hit go. See our first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and fifth cues. So that's how we record a regular uh, queue list. So let's switch back over to our slides for a moment. Um, running a queue list, uh, once you finish recording a queue list, as we saw, uh, you then have the dedicated queue, dedicated queue list section to help play it back. Functions in the section, uh, the functions in the section are as follows. Go runs the next, uh, next queue with the fade time. We didn't have any fade time set. Uh, stop pauses the live fade time. Uh, connect slash queue uh, functions in the queue button lists, uh, in the, uh, as the queue list syntax, i.e. record queue one, enter, uh, record step. Uh, this will take you into the record mode for the current queue. Double tapping this merges the information to the programmer into the current queue. You can also achieve this by pressing record and then QQ. A live times will take you to the times menu uh, for the current queue. A snapback runs the previous queue with no fade time. Snap four runs the next queue with no fade time. Uh, the next step. Uh, slash plus one, previous step, slash minus one, selects the previous queue, but does not really either selects the next queue and doesn't run it, or selects the previous queue and does not run it. A review that snaps back to the previous queue, then runs the fade time. Uh, rem dim, this puts all channels not currently selected at zero in the programmer. Uh, tip, not all buttons are available as hard buttons on every console. However, they can be assigned from the macro library as required or within user settings. Uh, so we switch back to our mobile display here. Uh, we'll see that we don't have all those buttons on here on my uh, Titan Go interface, excuse me. Uh, but if I had a Tiger Touch, uh, Arena, or Sapphire would have uh, all of those buttons. Uh, the Quartz Mobile and the Titan Go uh, interface do not have all of them. But again, they can be assigned from the show library, uh, from the macros in there, and we'll see those at another point in time. But let's see. Let's play around with the ones we do have uh, here now. Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that one. I meant to do uh, leave it where we were. So if we hit, uh, obviously if we hit go, it goes. Uh, if we want to say that we're on uh, Q, let's get all the way around just on this one so we have uh, Q1 playing. So if we wanted to go straight to Q3, we could type uh, Q3, and then we can either hit enter, which is what I usually like to do just out of habit, uh, or you can just straight up hit go, and we see that it skipped Q2 and went straight to Q3. So that's kind of handy there. Uh, if we want to... Uh, if we had fave times in here, which we don't currently, uh, we could, uh, uh, should we could, uh, use the next step, previous step buttons. Uh, we could also use, we use the previous step and have it go back to, uh, let's see here, have it go to Q2. Now when we hit go, we can see the Q2 goes live instead of, uh, Q going to Q4, we had to go back to Q3. And we can do it forward and skip all the way to Q5 uh, the same way. And hit go again, just loop around to Q1. Uh, let's say that in Q1, uh, I'm going to just move capture here so we can select our fixtures. Uh, you know, this position wasn't right for it, so we can select all our BMFLs and we'll use this one instead. And then to record uh, straight into Q1, since we have it active, we can just hit record and then QQ. Now if we hit clear and we go around through our queue list, 
see the Q1, or that's sorry, that's Q5. Uh, Q1 now has the new position in it because uh, we recorded it to it quickly that way. Uh, if we hit, uh, so say uh, we want to change, give some fade time here on, I'm going to go to Q2 to give our first fade time. Uh, we hit live time here, we're taking to the time menu. Uh, so we can set the delay in, the fade in, the delay out, the, uh, the fade out, uh, the moving darks, and all this. We'll also see all this other timing in this here in a bit. Uh, so I'm kind of skip through it for a quick second. And we'll just set a fade in of five and then hit enter. So now I will exit out of here. And we'll go all the way around to Q2. You can see that now it has a five-second fade-in, which is forever long. Uh, but it gives us a little good time to see uh, how long it is. So, uh, I believe that was all the buttons on the section I wanted to really uh, cover. Uh, also, with uh, when we're in this section, uh, say that we... Uh, we know that whatever Q time we had for Q3, which right now is zero, uh, we know we need it to be something else. We could type a time, say uh, five, and then hit go, and we'll now at Q3 will fire with a five second fade instead of whatever it had before, if zero, or if it had been 10 seconds, we could hit type five, would have been done in five seconds uh, instead. So I'm gonna pause for a quick moment and see if we've got any uh, real questions there. I have to say, I don't think I've ever uh, seen that one before, Gordon. Uh, using record and then next, next, to record a new queue after the currently live queue uh, in the connected queue list. I had never uh, seen that before. Uh, so let's, uh, uh, let's pop on over here and actually do that just because I've never seen it before. So we've got our currently live queue here of uh, Q3. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll select our fixtures and we'll locate them just to make it an uh, obvious change in here. We'll put them like that, and we'll throw in this color because we definitely hadn't used that any. And we'll leave them. Uh, we'll leave them with go with. We'll just go to Gobo, and we'll touch both of these so it stays in Gobo zero. So that was record, and then uh, oh golly, where's the next button? Do you mean the next Q? I assume. I don't think that worked. So I'm the. Was it next step? I am not seeing the next queue. Oh, next queue. Next go, not next step. Maybe that's not available on the Titan 1 interface then, Peter? Ah, okay, I did it with, uh, when I did it the hard key on the mobile I have attached here. Uh, apparently not in there. So if we hit clear, we see, yes, it did record a Q3.1. Uh, that's a good little uh, new one to go here. So we go all the way around. We got to Q, Q3, and then Q3.1 uh, like we just did. I'm seeing it now. 
Hey, it's all good there, Peter. It, uh, that's like I said, it was a new one. Uh, it was interesting to learn. Uh, that's a new one for everyone else, too, I'm sure. Uh, so let's talk about uh, recording a, when running a cue list. Uh, you want to use the snap function. Uh, you can do this like snap if, or if you're using a Titan one, Titan mobile, or quartz. Enable it in user settings. You just go to system mode, user settings. It will play with all that when you go into user settings uh, the day we do user settings. Uh, to jump to different cue and cue list, we did that. Uh, to see the contents of the cue list, press the view or open. Then select the cue list uh, to view that cue. And uh, as of version 11, this view will scroll along to keep the uh, active cue uh, visible. So we switch back over. We can use our open slash view key. Remember, on some consoles, it's labeled open, some it's labeled view, some it's labeled view and open. In our Titan Go interface, it is labeled uh, view. And then we can hit the blue button of the queue we wanted to view. Or if we have it recorded on a fader like we do here, we can just click this area here and bring up the same view. Uh, and we'll come back to the view and talk about it in a minute. Let's talk about uh, editing the cue list. You can edit the cue list the same as a chase by using the unfold method or by merging any changes done in the programmer, then use record, and then connect queue and specify the queue number on the keypad. You press enter, technically there's more button presses. However, users moving from the uh, to Titan from other uh, cue list based consoles might find the transition easier. Uh, once in the record mode, you simply have to set up to look for your first queue. Make sure you set the legend at any times you want, then save the information, repeat this process with as many queues as you desire. When you're finishing, press exit and clear. Uh, you also have the ability to quickly add another queue uh, into the queue list, you just set up, uh, set, set up your look so that you wish to record and hold down the record button and then press the, uh, the blue swap button of the playback handle. A uh, queue will automatically be added to the end of the queue list. Uh, we can open up and see that it's done. We'll actually go ahead and we'll do that one uh, real quick here. So uh, this is our queue list. It's connected. We can tell it is connected because uh, if we drop it down, it is still active. Uh, we could also uh, just connect it if we wanted to by hitting the connect queue button, then it's blue key. Uh, so let's just add another queue to the end of this one. And we'll just go ahead and uh, so if we were to select our BMFLs, we'll throw a locate on them. And we'll give them a uh, color we haven't really used. We haven't used this one. And I don't think we use that. Position any just to show, make sure we show it. So if we hit uh, press and hold record again on the Titan Go interface. That's going to be a right click on it. And then hit the blue swap button of our queue list. We now, if we open up our queue, we can hit clear. Uh, if we bring up our queue list view, we can see that it added in uh, a queue six to it. We only had five before. So if we were to hit uh, bring it up and hit go, we can go queue. Uh, now we're back to queue one, queue two, three. 3.145 and now uh, 6. So that's another way you can add a key list to it. Uh, well, we can go ahead and show the unfold. So if we hit uh, unfold and then select it, uh, we see that it lays out our key list uh, step by step onto our faders. So you can see exactly what's in Q1, 2, uh, 3, 4, uh, 5, and 6. And we'll go ahead and unfold to refold it. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, I'm just gonna pause for a moment and have a sip and uh, check back on any questions.
Uh, Joanne, you'll see that uh, I do just show both methods of recording it with the quick build or with just recording them straight out, uh, just using palettes to make my uh, uh, my looks just to, to speed up programming. And as always, suggest to always record with, uh, always use palettes and recording things because it will make your life easier uh, in the long run. That's why I always uh, suggest to do it that way. Shot. Uh, if I sip, you take a shot. Well, yeah, I think that's a great idea for you guys. Oh, <laughs> you're going to be drunk. Uh, let's talk about uh, editing, uh, some more editing cue lists. Editing cue list times are different uh, times you can be edited in the playback view window, uh, such as fade and delay times. The screen progress bar will display on each queue. It has its face. Let's actually go ahead and bring up our cue list view and uh, go through it. Uh, so we'll swap back over to our uh, mobile display. Or because this is my Titan Mobile, uh, that's why I keep calling it that, even though we're using the T1 interface. Uh, we'll see that if we hit go on each of them, uh, well, we don't have any fade time. This one actually has the fade times. We can see that it has the uh, five second fade in uh, there with the green progress bar. Uh, let's go across everything in this uh, view here. We have uh, obviously the queue numbers and be our first one, our queue legend. If we had named them something other than Q123, 3.1, yada, 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 we'd see that here. Uh, we said our delay in, just like it sounds, the delays uh, in for when it starts, our fade in, our delay out, and our fade out, our fixture overlap, just like we've been showing with other things, fixture overlap, you can put that into each step of your cue list if you so wish. Uh, link, uh, we'll come back to, uh, actually, we'll go ahead and talk about that first uh, right now. With our link, uh, we have the options to go for, and you can do this individually or for the whole cue list. Uh, wait for go, I always wait until we hit that big red go button. Uh, link after uh, link with previous and link after previous. Link with previous means that if we had uh, say Q1, uh, we had Q2 sent link, link with previous that at the same time Q1 fired, Q2 would automatically also fire, so they would both fire at the same time. Uh, link after previous uh, would set it so that uh, after Q1 finished with its fade times, Q2 would then start. So we had a, a Q or a delay in or fade in on Q1 of five seconds, let's say. And then uh, we had a link after previous. After those five seconds got done for Q2 to finish, Q3, uh, Q2, or after Q1 got done with its five seconds of fade, Q2 would automatically start uh, with its fade time. I hope that makes sense. Uh, continue going along here. Uh, link offset, we can basically put a delay for the link. Uh, so if we wanted to have uh, that same scenario where we've got a, delay, a fade in of five seconds on Q1 and we wanted Q2 to link after previous and put a, 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 a link offset of uh, three seconds, what would happen is uh, Q1 would get done with this five seconds fade, then three seconds later, Q2 would fire. It was set for a link after previous. It was set link with previous. Uh, what would happen is Q1 would fire, then three seconds later, Q2 would fire. I assume we would, uh, we'd done it three there. Uh, move in dark, uh, we'll come back to in a short moment and talk about it. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, so we'll skip all that curve, just like other places we've seen in Titan. We can set a curve. Again, the curves are listed in the manual if you want to take a look at them. Uh, tracking, we'll come back to. Uh, auto loads, we'll come back to in a short moment here. Effect speed, if we had a shaper effect in here, we could set a multiplier or a divisor for it. Uh, time code, we'll be doing on another day. Uh, notes, we could add notes to uh, our cue list here so that maybe we could, you know, remind ourselves of something we need to remember that, uh, you know, in Q3, uh, spotlights need to go to red uh, for the stage left or whatever, you know, something along that lines to help you remember something you need. Uh, macros, you can add a macro and a queue list. Uh, we'll get into that on the macros day. I think we're doing that next Tuesday, not tomorrow, but next week. Uh, view queue, we can view the actual stuff that's in the queue. If we had any shapes or pixel maps in there, we can see them here. And our last one is uh, disabled. So say that uh, one of your singers uh, can't do her solo that was in Q3 uh, normally. Uh, what we could do is we could just disable that queue so that uh, uh, it would just, the cue list just won't play it so that uh, we don't have to re-record the cue list or I remember to try to redo it the next day. We can simply just uh, uh, turn it off for today and then turn it back on tomorrow when her voice is better and she can do her solo again uh, and have it play that cue list. So let's go ahead and show how that works real quick. Uh, so we see that we've got Q3 disabled. So we exit here and we bring up our cue list. And let's go, let's connect to Q1 Go. So we're back at Q1. 
Uh, now we hit, we go to Q2, we see it plays. When we hit go, it skipped Q3 and went straight to 3.1 uh, because it, it uh, uh, we had it disabled for Q3. Now let's say that tomorrow that her Q, her voice is better so she can do her solo. We can set the cues back to uh, uh, not disabled and we'll go back to Q1 for a second. And then, uh, that's not right. Q, one, go. It would be helpful if I could type correctly. I uh, hit go, we keep Q1 to Q2. And we hit go again, we go to Q3, and into 3.1. So we can see that it uh, uh, disabled it and then re-enabled it handily. Kind of handy to have. Uh, so let's skip back uh, for a second. And let's talk about auto loads. <laughs> uh, no one wants me to sing, Sam. Uh, so let's talk about auto loads. Uh, basic auto loads. Auto loads way of uh, linking pre existing playbacks to your queue list. Uh, this could be a single queue, a chase, a pixel map, or shape, or even another queue list. Uh, when you auto load something, it does not record anything into the queue list, only a link uh, so that the original item you are auto loading is updated. Uh, then so are the auto loads. To auto load a playback, simply click on the auto load column of the queue you want to auto load in. Then click the blue swap button of the playback to link in. Auto loads do not track. So if you want them in more than one queue, uh, simply drag more than one field in the auto load column to remove an auto load select it then in soft keys select which one if you have more than one uh, you want to look at and then press remove from the soft keys so before we get into complex auto loads let's just show a quick basic one so see here i have these two chases recorded uh on uh faders uh what is that uh Actually, sell on seven and eight. How funny they're really labeled uh, Chase seven and eight and are on seven and eight. Uh, so, let's say that we want uh, Chase seven to play back in Q uh, three point one of our uh, Q list here. I can simply click on the Q list on the auto load column here and select which one I want to auto load. We'll have it do this one, and on Qs uh, five and seven. Oh, come on! Let me drag. There we go. Uh, we want to do chase eight. So now I'll exit out of here and close this view. And we'll go ahead and switch over to our, with capture display, so we can actually see everything here. I uh, see it kind of nicer. So that if we hit, uh, we'll go ahead and release this queue list. I'll just be double tap and release all. And now we're going to hit uh, go. We see our Q1, our Q2, our Q3. Now our 3.1, you see that basically looked like our fader, this playback is now often, or is now uh, active because it's now running that chase that was on here. If we hit go again, it just goes to Q4, then Q5, and we see that it does the chase, uh, chase 8, it basically looked like it basically raised the fader here. If we hit go again, uh, we can see that it went to, on Q6, it does the uh, same thing. And we loop back around to Q... Uh, one, two, three, and so on, forth, and so, uh, so on and so forth. So let's switch back to our uh, full display here. Uh, to remove an auto load from a uh, playback, let's say that we didn't want it in Q6 here. We can simply click on it. And then our soft keys, uh, where it says we could choose which one. If we had more than one here, that would be listed. I'll uh, accept which one we want. And then uh, remove this auto load. And you can see that now it is gone uh, from Q6. So, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, you guys are being silly today. Uh, it's Monday, right? Uh, so let's talk about uh, complex auto loads. You can achieve uh, more complex effects by linking cue lists together. For example, if you have programmed a lighting cue list and a video or pixel map cue list separately, you can link them together using auto load. To start with, if you wanted to fire Q1 in a cue list in Q2 of another cue list, you would go to the auto load column for Q2 of the second cue list and click on the cell. Now, in the same way, 
uh, you did for basic auto load, you click on the playback to auto load. In this case, the first cue list, the default action for the auto load is load. Uh, we then change this by selecting the auto load, then on soft key B, we have the three options to toggle between load target. This will effectively raise the fader of the playback being auto loaded, as we just saw with our basic auto load. Go to cue list, thus you specify a cue from a cue list you're auto loading. Uh, press go on target, the same the action, press and go on another cue list at the same time. So now, we'll, uh, since we have uh, two cue lists here, uh, we can show this fairly easily. Uh, so if we, uh, I'll go ahead and remove these other auto loads, just to get them out of the way. Uh, so if we hit, uh, we're gonna go ahead and release this cue list, close our view here. If we bring up this cue list and hit go, uh, we can see what the different cues are uh, for each one. And that way I can remember what Q it is. I want to load Q5 just so I can remember it. So now if we bring up a Q list up, or Q list view up for Q6, let's so save that in Q3 uh, of uh, this Q list here. I want it to auto load uh, Q list 5. And then I, if I click after after uh, telling you I want to auto load, I can then click on save as we saw on soft key A. Uh, they could remove it, or I could change my uh, mode uh, from load to target to uh, go to queue on target or press go. We're going to have it to go to a certain queue. I want the queue to fire is, whoops, click myself out of there. I want it to go to queue five and enter it and then hit exit. So now we'll see that if I play back this queue list, why are you, whoops, we're not connected to the right one. Let the speeder all the way down. Release everything. Sometimes I hate that with the uh, Titan Go interface. So I hit go here, we get to Q1, Q2, Q3. We can see it, it uh, basically fired this Q list and went to Q5 of it. We hit go again, it defire, unfires that Q list or defires it. I don't know how the heck you'd actually want to say that. And goes to Q3.1. Uh, we go around, we see all of our other Qs. We come back around. Uh, we can see that it goes does the same thing again. So let's bring our queue list view back up. And if we change this instead of uh, go to Q5 on that, we change it to just press go on target. And then we exit out of here. Now, if we uh, fire this queue list and we go around, when we get to Q3, it basically hits go on this queue list here and uh, would play it back. Now, we only have so many fixtures, so it's kind of hard to show it without enough different fixtures there. Uh, but I, I assume you guys get the idea of what it's doing there for us. So I'll pause for a quick second for uh, any questions. Ceases fire, ceases fire. I'll have to start using that from now on, Nigel. Who's Will and why are we setting him on fire? Uh, Corey, actually, we can, uh, we'll go back to our mobile display and, and uh, sh talk about that real quick. Uh, it can do uh, either. You have it to use the auto load times. Uh, here you can have it use the times that are in the queues themselves, or uh, you can uh, change the fade to be whatever you want. Instead of queue time, we could change it to uh, three. And we now say, see that it would uh, use a different time for it. So now if we go to, and I'm going to change this to set a go on here, I'm going to have it do go to queue five again. And now we'll close all this and exit. And now we hit go. Got to get all the way back around. We can see that it fades in now in three seconds instead of the zero fade time that was there before.
Yeah, Charlotte, you could use the auto loads. Uh, you could have uh, two Qlets fire over and over and over and over. Uh, they have them both make go on both of them. You just have to set it up in each one easily enough. So uh, with that, let's talk about tracking. Uh, by default, all queue lists created in Titan will track. This can be turned on or off on both a per queue list or per queue basis. Uh, tracking means that only changes made from the current queue to the next queue will be recorded, uh, no matter uh, what record uh, mode you're in. So that if you locate some pictures, then apply a position and color palette, and then record Q1, then only then only queue. Then only Q to, uh, only change to a different position, sorry, uh, and record Q2. The color information will not be re-recorded into Q2, only the position information, information as it is different. This means if you change the color in, uh, change the color information in Q1, Q2 will also be updated as the value is tracking through. This also means the dimmer values from LTP values in QList and that they will remain the last given value uh, until a new one is recorded. You do not need to press clear in between queues as pressing clear is not the same as putting everything to a zero dimmer value. If you turn tracking off, then everything uh, and then everything in the program will be recorded into every queue, and only only information actually contained in the queue will be shown on stage. Uh, when using Quick Build to construct the queue list, it is recommended that you turn tracking off for the queue list, so you see information uh, just so you'll just see the information for each queue. Uh, go to playback options, set tracking to off. As we earlier, why we saw the uh, the queue uh, on our queue list that we had, saw the park hands tracking through to the other queues because the tracking was on uh, from other queues and the first queues had our park hands on and our other ones didn't. Uh, and let me see what our next slide is. Maybe we'll bump over and play with that a bit. Actually, let's talk about this first. Uh, tracking recorded by channels, the traditional method that Hog and Ma users would be familiar with, but tracking with record by fixtures is also a very powerful tool. It means that when starting a new queue list or when introducing new fixtures to a queue, you do not need to touch all their values to ensure the fixtures will always start in exactly that state. Uh, once you've introduced a fixture, uh, then the same rules of tracking applies. Only changes you make will be recorded. Uh, tracking is turned on by default in the queue list, uh, as well as the center tracking. You can set the individual queues to the following options. Uh, global will follow the global setting to find under playback options. Global means global for that queue list, not for the entire console. Uh, track will force queue to tracking if the playback option is off. Block will block all, will stop all previous tracked values and start again. Solo will now output previous tracked values, only the contents of the queue. However, the next queue is fired, the tracked uh, Values reinstate and the contents of the solo queue disappear. Uh, queue only track values uh, output uh, uh, track values output in the queue, but the contents of the queue will not track track forwards. So uh, let's uh, make a queue list specifically to show this all a little better. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll do uh, I'll just go to a blank page here and uh, let's select our BMFLs and we'll locate them. for real this time. And then we'll go ahead and hit uh, record three times to get a queue list. And we'll start one over here on this fader. Uh, we'll make our fixtures red. And our record mode is still fixture. So we'll go ahead and uh, hit our oh, append queue. So there's our Q1. Uh, Q2, we'll change. All we'll do is change them to yellow. And then we'll hit append queue. And then we'll go ahead and Put our figure, we'll clear it. We'll select our dim, our park hands and locate them, and then we'll append to Q3, and then we'll hit. Uh, we'll take. Uh, we'll use our even all button and go even and take their dimmer to zero. And append Q. And then take our take our other ones, take them to zero, append to Q. I think this one might be a helpful. Show it relatively easily here. Uh, so if we uh, fire this Q, we can see that there's the Q1, Q2, Q3, 4, and 5. We saw that even though we didn't have our BMFLs in Qs uh, 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 3, 4, and 5, they were still on because their values were tracking through. So if we bring our Qlist view up, 
And we go to our tracking column. Where do do do? Where are we here? Blah, blah. Why am I blinded? There we are. Yes. Uh, change our change it. Change it to. Uh, uh, so we'll leave it on global. So we'll do our playback options, and select here. And then go to uh, tracking, and we turn tracking off, so it's off for this queue list. So I'll exit out of here, and we go ahead and close this too, so we can see. Now, if we hit go on Q1, we see our red fixtures. I go to yellow, switch to here now in Q3. Our our uh, BM fells have gone away because they're not tracking through any longer. So we'll go back at our playback options, and we will turn tracking back on for now, and exit out of it. And now when we hit go, we can see that our BMFL stay on. So now we'll bring up our keyless view, and let's say in our tracking from set of global on Q2, we change it to, uh, actually to show it here. So we see that uh, in our position in Q1 is pointing straight down, same thing on Q2. Now if we go back to Q1, and we change our position, and then do record QQ, and then hit clear. When we come back around to Q1, oops, did it, what the heck? Why are you being making me look silly here? Uh, Set all our BFLs, do this, record QQ. And hit clear and now go there we are we see that our, our tracking since we changed our position in q1 it also changed in q2 this is what i was trying to show uh so now let's uh in our global say in our global tracking here we change it from uh from global to uh would be a good one for this um We'll change it to Q only. May have not may have put myself on a bad spot here for showing this off. So we come around to Q1, goes to Q2, when we go to Q3, we can see that our, our fixtures went back from yellow back to red because their values from uh, Q2 then going to yellow is not tracking through. If we go to, uh, we change it from Q only to uh, block tracking, and we close it here. Now when we go all the way back around, we see our Q1. With our position, we go to Q2. We don't have our uh, intensity in there because the intensity wasn't recorded in Q2, so our fixtures are quote-unquote completely gone. And you see that it doesn't, uh, the tracking is being completely blocked from Q1 on. So we bring our keyless view back up, and we change it on Q2 from block to... Uh, solo excluding, or we don't have any shapes, so it doesn't really matter if we do solo excluding shapes or shapes, or it's just plain solo. So now when we close it and we go back around, we hit Q1, and we go to Q2. Uh, again, nothing was recorded there, so it doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't have any intensity recorded in it, so it goes on and we go to Q3. It goes, rebads, adds back in our, uh, stuff. So actually, let's go to, Run to Q2 and give it some something more. Let's do it. Uh, let's take our odd BMFLs and put their dimmer at full. And now do record QQ and hit clear. Now when we hit go, go back to Q1. Uh, then we hit Q2. Oh, there's our Q1, sorry. Then we hit Q2. We see that it brings up just those ones, but it does not track on into Q3. Uh, oh, and I don't have, oh, nolly, jelly, gee willikers, I really screwed this all up, didn't I? Ha, ha, ha. Oh, give me a moment. So can someone tell me uh, where I didn't switch the screen at so I can try to go back to that? Uh, 
And thanks to whoever sent me the text to uh, wake me up there. So back to the start of uh, showing the different types of tracking, huh? All right, so oh, let's try this again here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So uh, let's set our tracking back to global for everything and start over. So let me release this cue list. So I made a simple little cue list here that has uh, looks like this. You can see that our fixtures are tracking through. Uh, actually, here, we'll just delete this, and we'll just start that whole thing over. Golly gee willikers, I am such a dummy head. All right, so let's uh, select our PMFLs, and we'll throw a locate on them. And we'll give them position and a color. And we're going to hit record three times. And select an empty playback, we did here. So we're going to hit append Q1 here. And the only thing we do is change the color. We'll hit uh, to Q2. And then uh, we'll change the position in Q3 to that. And we'll change it. We'll record it. Then we're going to go ahead and hit clear. And we'll select all of our park hands. And we'll locate them so we can see them. And we'll uh, append to that queue. And then we'll use the audio of an all button. And we'll take half of them to that and append the queue. And then take the other half, put them at zero and append the queue. Now we'll hit exit and clear. So now when we fire this uh, queue list that you all can see, <laughs> uh, we see we have our first queue, our second queue, our third queue, and then we have our park hands in, out. Um, And we see that it tracks through. Uh, even though we'd hit clear, our BMFLs are still in those uh, last two queues, our last three queues, because they are tracking through. So that if we go to uh, bring up our queue list view, or actually we go to playback options, and we'll select our queue list, and we'll turn tracking off. And exit all the way to that. So now when we hit, uh, we're on Q1, so we hit go to go to Q2. Uh, we can see that our fixtures uh, go to... Are we not? Something's not right here. Yes, it is. So, I hit go. We go to Q1. Or we have, there we go, Q1. They come up in red. We go to Q2. They change to yellow. Uh, Q3, they move. Four, we can see that the BMFLs go away because we cleared them. And then so do all of our other fixtures. So, if we turn tracking back on for this, sorry, playback options. Turn tracking back on. And we hit through our goes. We can see that our pars stay up. Uh, the entire time. So, uh, let's talk about the, I'll show the different types of uh, tracking properly this time. Uh, so, of Q2, we change it from global and we change it to uh, a block so it doesn't track uh, through. If we hit go here, we see that in Q3, 2 now has nothing in it and we don't see anything in Q3 because we blocked our tracked values coming out of Q1. And then in Q4, we get our park hands in half, and then the other half uh, go out again. And we go back to Q1, we get this again. So if we were to go to Q2 here, uh, and we'll go ahead and select our meme, we'll actually we'll select our odds, and we'll set their dimmer at full. And then hit record, and QQ, so it records into Q2 uh, for us, so it has this information. If we go back around, to Q1, now when we hit Q2, we get half our BMFLs. When we get to go to Q3, we still have those same ones because their their values tracking through from Q2 and continuing on. Now, if I were to bring our playback view, view back up, and actually here I can do this instead of having to close it every time. I think we can, yeah, we can see enough. Uh, so we change our tracking from block to uh, uh, solo. Now, if we hit uh, uh, go when we go to Q2, uh, we see the uh, 
uh, the BMFLs with their uh, intensity up there. And then when you hit go, we see that it goes away and goes back to uh, what it was doing in Q1 uh, because it tracked basically tracking the values from one to three and only did output two as a uh, solo queue. So we change it on track on uh, Q2, excuse me, to uh, uh, Q only. When we hit uh, go back around to our Q1, uh, when we hit Q2, it's going to take the track values from one, play them in two also, which that's why all of our fixtures are on. When we hit go to go to Q3, it basically takes everything, uh, turns everything that was in Q2 off and goes back to what it was in Q1. That is, I hope that uh, makes sense. So uh, that would be uh, Q only. Uh, what other options do we have in here? What might I not be showing? Uh, solo, uh, we just showed, yes. Um, block, if we had, or we did that. So if we had uh, the, tr the option track and block shapes, obviously we don't have, if we had any shapes, we could block the shapes uh, in that queue and stop them. Or if we had uh, in playback options, if we had tracking turned off, but then in... Uh, so we'll set everything to global. And then on this one, I specifically told it to track. Now when I hit go, all the way back around to Q1, when we track into Q2, we can see that our uh, values of all of our intense fixtures being on in intensity is tracked through to Q2. When we hit go, it uh, uh, tracks, uh, tracks those in, but does not track the rest in. hope that is working for you guys. So let's talk about shape tracking. Uh, similar to queue tracking, uh, when a queue is recorded with a shape, it automatically tracks to the next. Uh, this will be managing the column shapes. Here you have the ability to view any shapes you have in your queues. Uh, you can toggle them on or off, uh, white to the next. And I believe that this queue list has some shapes in it already. Haha, -ha, it does, so that helps us show it. Uh, so we're going to just double tap release to release all active playbacks. And we'll fire this playback here and hit go. We can see that when we get to Q4 here, it's got a shape, a circle shape recorded in it. And that it has the, oops, <laughs> let me switch over. Uh, so drink, uh, switching back over. Uh, we see that at this Q list here, it has a, uh, uh, Q has a shape in Q4 here, the circle and it's tracking in to Qs five and six. So if I wanted to not, tr uh, have the circle track into Q5, I can turn it off here. It automatically goes away from Q6 because there is no, uh, it can't track what doesn't exist anymore to there. So we go back around if we turn it on in five, but off in six, and we hit our go, we can go all the way around. We see that our circle is there. It also plays in Q5, but does not play in Q6 now because uh, we turned our tracking off here. If we turned our tracking back on, we can see the circle now tracks from all the way from Q4 into Q6. Uh, now you can uh, use a uh, a block shape uh, to stop a Q to stop a uh, a uh, shape from running. However, using the shapes tracking here is better uh, because the uh, what we found out here is there was I was working with a programmer and uh, what he found out he was having problems that uh, so he has he has massive cue lists. Let me get my story all set up in my brain here. His shows use pretty massive cue lists. He has like each song is like three or four hundred cues long, and then the band he travels with has like a forty song catalog. So you can imagine how many uh, playbacks he has in his console. So what would happen is that he was using a lot of block shapes to stop his shapes from running in different cues. Well, Titan sees a block shape as a shape just with zero size and zero speed. So what happens is you go to update his position palettes, and when you update a position palette in Titan, it does it goes through all your cue lists and takes them and puts all of the uh, 
uh, information tracking through for all those cue lists and, and does all the math for it. So he would change a cue list, he would change the position palette, and the console would almost lock up on him for like five minutes while we'd go through and do all that math. And then, you know, he could change another position palette, have to wait another few minutes and take, change it. So we figured out that's what's going on. Uh, we made some macros so you could get around it. Uh, he then took uh, my training class a few years ago and then re-recorded his show uh, using block shapes here, and he no longer has that problem. So not saying don't use block shapes, but if you're using a lot of shapes in your cue list, this might be a better way to turn them off rather than just using a uh, block shape, just so you know. So let's talk about uh, moving dark real quick. Uh, move and darkest way of getting fixtures to automatically preset so that when the dimmer comes up, they're already in the correct color position, etc. Uh, move and dark will preset all information in the queue except for dimmers and shapes. Uh, this can be set in either a whole queue list under playback options or per queue basis. Move and dark will happen after the fade time for each queue is completed. For example, if you have a queue fading to black, if you have a, if you have a queue fading to black in queue five and comes back on a queue six in a different position, uh, you will not need a point queue in between for the move and dark as the console will wait until the fade down in queue five is completed. Then move the fixture, and a Q6 comes up in the new position. Oops, wrong one. Uh, types of moving dark queue number will force the contents of queue to preset in a certain queue. Queue offset uh, presets a certain number of queues before. If queues are inserted, the, sh uh, the offset is preserved. Global follows the settings to find under playback options. Disabled won't allow this queue to move in dark early. The queue will preset as early as possible. Late will increase uh, preset in the queue before. Uh, move and dark inhibit. This uh, column allows you, uh, lets you freeze a queue so that no movement in dark can happen during it. This is especially useful if you're running a, a theater show and want to no fixture movement noise during the scene. Uh, move, in, uh, move in dark slash fade and delay time allows you to set a separate fade and delay uh, move in dark time for each queue. Let's see what our next slide is. Uh, and we'll go, let's go back to our movement here and let's show uh, some moving dark stuff. I think that uh, this key list over here will actually probably be a better one for it. Uh, and we'll see here if we go across our, uh, here we've got our moving dark column with inhibit, uh, fade and delay. So we know we've got that our fixtures fading to uh fading to, or at least should be fading to it in here. Uh, we're going to turn, actually here what we'll do is we'll select, uh, I was going to set our back to global, and we will take and select our evens, and put them at zero, and record QQ. So we specifically recorded these fixtures at zero in this Q. So now if we hit go, Q1, Q2, they have them fade out. And in Q3, they come up uh, here. And we'll essentially change our color. And you record QQ. All right, so this should be set up well for us to show moving dark with. So now if I hit uh, go here, we can see we get around to our, uh, we go to Q1, we have this, Q2, half of our lights fade out. Uh, and actually, let's put some fade times in all of these. Let's put a nice uh, three-second fade just to make everything last a little longer so you, you can see it. We see that our fixtures fade and then uh, come around here so we go back all the way around. Let it finish doing everything. So if we go to Q2, we can see that uh, half of our lights fade out. When we go to Q3, everything fades back in and moves at the same time. So uh, if we set our move in dark uh, on Q3, uh, I'm going to get this backwards in my head here. Uh, set it from uh, global to uh, early. So now when we go all the way back around, probably should uh, made a shorter queue. Let's do this with. We go when we fade to Q. Uh, two, we can see that our lights fade out. And uh, now when we hit go on uh, Q3, our lights are already pointing uh, in that new direction and in the new, uh, in the color already. If we hit go, we go all the way back around. Uh, since it's on the, uh, only our second Q is kind of hard to 
uh, show uh, a show with, with the different types of, uh, of early and late. Uh, but just like we saw, the, the timing works on there. But you can see what the base with moving dark is. I'm doing a really tongue-tied uh, description of of uh, of moving dark here. But basically, moving dark makes it so instead of having your movers sweep across the stage, uh, which is what they say is in general in the theater show, you generally don't watch your movers sweeping across the stage. We're in rock and roll, that's where we make our big bucks is by making movers sweep across the stage. But with the moving dark, what allows us to not have that uh, happen. Uh, so I'm actually going to go to Q3 here and change the color on everything here since it didn't do it for me uh, last time. Now we'll hit record and QQ. Now we'll hit clear. So now we'll go back around and have this up again. So we go, we go to Q2. We can see that our half of our lights fade out and uh, just our uh, half, other half remain. Now, when we go to our next one, we can see that our lights are already in blue and pointing in the new spot, and the other ones are the only ones that move. I hope that actually explains it a heck of a lot better than I just tongue-tied myself out. Uh, if we put an inhibit on here, we could set uh, uh, have it specifically not do a move in dark for it. So we could have, if we had all of them set to, uh, our global move in dark setting was set to early, we could have it do it for not that particular one, or we can give a different fade into late times uh, for our move in dark so we can make them move slower if we so wish. Uh, swap back over and talk about that. So disabled, we can have it not work on this one uh, early. We'll preset as early as possible. Late, we'll preset in the queue before. Uh, so if we had it for, say we had our flights fading out in queue 2 like we do, we didn't have them coming back on until queue 10. Uh, with early means that they would move uh, during uh, queue 3 and be ready, and then sit in from queues 3 uh, through 9, sit and just wait. Uh, late means that they would... Uh, move during Q9 to get ready to come back on in Q10. I hope that makes a, a little bit more sense there. I've got myself a little tongue-tied and talking poor, terribly right now. Uh, some tips for running queue lists. Uh, once a queue list is fired, it remains active until you kill it. You can just hold, hold down the AVO button and then press the blue select button of the queue list handle, or you press release and then hit that queue list, uh, or you can double tap release, which releases all, all live running playbacks. Uh, handy, but very dangerous because it releases all running playbacks. So if you're double tapping release, uh, be careful with it. Uh, kill at zero, you can change this uh, in the playback options to make your queue list automatically clear when the fader reaches zero. Uh, and so with the playback option the program menu and then select button of the queue and then select uh, under the fader tab on uh, fader mode intensity kill at zero and we'll play with that here in a second. You can also use key profiles to set one of the handle buttons to be the, to uh, be release. Uh, you can also put a macro in and have it uh, that will release me. It's called the release me macro will release that particular key list and we'll see that when we do the macros days. Uh, live fade time. If you type in a time and then press go, it'll be for that new fade time. We talked about that already. Uh, while a queue list remains active, any shapes and effects stored in the current queue will run even if the fader is at zero. So if you're working with a queue list and have unexpected, uh, unexplained shapes occurring, uh, check that all queue lists have been, fi or have been killed. we see what our next slide says, and then we might uh, uh, pick some mapping we're not doing today. That is tomorrow. Uh, so let's go back to our mobile display real quick and uh, uh, show a couple of those things we did. Give me one second here. Why did it not do that? Uh, so we see that uh, we have this queue list active. Uh, if we press and hold the AVO key, again, right click on the Titan Go interface and hit the blue button, we see that it kills that uh, queue list and uh, turns it off. Uh, if we have it going, uh, we can also hit release, adding the blue button on it and have it release it. Uh, we can also go into our playback options, have you playback options, and then hit our blue button on our chase here. Uh, we go to fader, intensity kill at uh, zero. So now if we exit out of here, whoops, why did I close capture? Uh, we see that if I drop this queue list, it, it automatically kills it and basically restarts back at one because we killed it. Uh, we'll show with the uh, issue with the shapes that we were talking about here. So, whoops, connect to you. Actually, do release you. Uh, we'll see if we get all the way back here. We see we've got a shape running. Even if I bring this fader down, 
And they bring up this queue that says we find a queue that just has uh, fixtures in it. We'll do release, release, we'll actually just do this. Locate, give my color and a position, and record that here. So now we see that we have that, that's all it's running. There's not a shape recorded in it, correct? So if we go here and we go to this queue, and we go to a queue that has a shape running, even though I dropped this fader to zero, if I bring this queue up, that shape is still running, right? So if that has, if has this happening, you're trying to figure out where some random shapes are coming from, uh, make sure that all your queue lists that might be running are gone. Uh, you can either double tap release, or you could go to the workspace window of... Uh, my, my active playbacks and look for any active playbacks here. Oh, I got this cue list running. So I could do release and tap that cue list and you can see that the shape now stops because that cue list has been killed. So uh, with that, uh, let's see. There were some direct questions I was supposed to answer today. Can I make a cue list with uh, just color bumps? Uh, yes. So let's do that here real quick. Let's look, go to our... Uh, interface here, and again, we'll just use that playback. Uh, let's do open up capture so we can see it. We'll have this playback here that just has our lights pointing in this and uh, just in a color. So we'll go ahead and select our uh, fixtures, and we'll go to, uh, we'll leave this up so we can see our fixtures, and we'll hit record three times. And we'll select an empty fader, and we'll set our record mode to channel. And then I work at a done quick build because I'm going to use uh, palettes to do it, but we'll just do it with uh, channel. So if I change the color, hit the blue button, 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 change the color, hit the blue button. And we'll call that good enough. So I'll hit exit and clear it. So now I'll refire this queue. We see they got our fixtures go back to yellow. If I fire this queue list, now when I hit go, we see they go red, yellow, uh, slightly different yellow, well, kind of a light green. And that's so I basically just turned the queue list into uh, color bumps there. So that's how I would do that. Uh, and I see you asked a question, Jay, but give me a minute to get to it. Uh, Nigel, uh, can you ask your question again so I can make sure I answer exactly what you're asking for? I think uh, Nigel's a question, if I'm remembering correctly, he hasn't posted it back up in the question, but uh, it was individual fade delay times uh, per uh, attribute. So uh, let's see here, we'll bring up this Keyless view. We'll give everything a fade in of uh, five seconds. So now that we hit uh, go on our cue list, Every queue takes five seconds to uh, fade in. And what the heck? Yeah, you guys can. Yeah, I think we're live here. Uh, Facebook's showing me something weird, so we'll just keep going with it. Uh, hopefully, you guys can still see me. Uh, so here we've got it. Uh, everything's got a five second fade. So let's say that I specifically wanted to have uh, a different time for uh, the intensity in fade one or in Q1. Uh, instead of having a five second fade in, I want it to be a uh, one second fade in. So what I can do is on uh, Q1 here is in edit times and select the Q. And then go to, whoops, did I hit legend? I did, didn't I? Edit times and select Q1. Really? Why are you trying to make me look silly here? Actually, here I can, oh, wait, I think I know what I'm doing wrong here. Because I am not thinking correctly, because it's today, yay. Uh, if I go to attribute group times on my soft key, so I hit next. Uh, a couple of times here. 
and then I can select the uh, attribute that I want. In this case, I'll go to dimmer for everything. Instead of having them do a five second fade, I'll set my fade in to be one second on intensity. Enter and I'll exit out of here. So then I'll do release this key list and bring it up. And when I hit go, we can see the intensity came up in one second, but my movement is still taking uh, the uh, eight seconds apparently that I gave it, not five. I mistyped that. Uh, you see there, I did it, did that with it there. Uh, I hope that helps uh, with that. Oh, basically, I did the exact opposite of what you asked. Uh, I did dimmer fades in quickly. Position uh, moves quick. I did the opposite. I did dimmer fades in uh, quickly, but position uh, moves slowly. But we could have just done that with the uh, pan and tilt attributes instead of the dimmer attribute like I did. So I hope that makes sense. And yes, it could be done with syntax Perry. Uh, Perry, Sam, you are correct. However, we know that I hate syntax typing, but you, Gordon, and I will all do a video together at some point to uh, do syntax. So uh, with that, we'll uh, go ahead and since I don't see any, unless anyone else has got some other questions, uh, please do ask and we'll try and uh, get them in there. Uh, I know we had a little bit of a major screen switch issue today, but uh, we get, got to do it twice, right? So you get to listen to me doing it once, then you get to see and listen to me do it. Uh, that's always a good time, right? I uh, hope that helps with everybody, but uh, we will call it a day for today, for, uh, a day Call it a day for today from here in Mission Control. Uh, as always, love, thanks to everybody for joining us. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we've got in our, uh, we've also, you know, we can always find the training events we're doing for the next day on avalites.us slash training events. And if this loads up correctly, uh, it didn't. Uh, let me, uh, do, do, do. Let it scroll on down here and let's see what we're doing tomorrow. We are doing pixel mapping. Uh, then on Wednesday, we'll be messing about with Synergy. Uh, so, uh, and also you can also always find out what's going on on avalites.com slash online resources. Uh, we've also added a YouTube channel uh, since the... Uh, uh, I don't like the way that Facebook's organizing our videos and the quality kind of sucks. We are now uh, going to be able to have an Ava Lights uh, USA channel. Uh, the address here, hopefully uh, soon enough, we can get that to have a, a much better uh, URL. But I need to have uh, at least 100, fo 100 subscribers. So if you all wouldn't mind hopping on there and subscribing and getting everyone, all your friends to subscribe too, that would be great so that we can uh, get that channel count up or get that subscriber count out so we can get a uh, decent uh, URL on it, that would be great. Uh, there's also a playlist that has these in order on it, so you don't have to try to follow the order that we've done them in. Uh, since this class, the, these uh, training events are building on each other up to a final thing. And we'll put up all three here at once so you can keep an eye on it. Uh, and uh, go there again, hop on that YouTube channel if you need to see one of our old ones. Uh, this will get uploaded to it as soon as possible, in a, hopefully at a higher res than our last few, uh, because Facebook really chunks the quality on them. Uh, but we hope to fix it from there. So once again, thank you all for uh, everybody, and uh, come hop in, and uh, uh, we'll do it tomorrow. We'll do the pixel mapping and have a good old time.